Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JTO Sullivan. Today, Mac Jones, the Patriots, the L's continue. We're breaking it down. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of this channel. Not only is it a great, cheap way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content, usually long format video over there trying to create the environment of what it's like in an NFL quarterback room. So all sorts of nuance, detail, depth about the quarterback position, offensive and defensive systems and structures. If you're into that type of thing, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community. Hop over there, join, become a member. The link is in the video description. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. Mac Jones, week six, the Patriots versus the Raiders. Down here to the bottom, we're going to run a little spot to the number one. One of the few bright spots, pun intended, in this one. It's a tough world out there for the Patriots offense. My goodness. Uh, I'm not going to put them all in this video, but the penalties... The quick outs, it's a, it's a tough, tough watch right now. It really is. You know, the Patriots, I feel like, have always been what I would consider an unique-ish offense in the league, but just doing so many things that you don't see a lot of other people do. And so this is a decent example of it for me. Well, pause it here right at the snap. This concept to me is just a simple little spot route. Now, they certainly don't call it that, or most likely don't call it that. That little flat with the spot, great. But when it's tethered to what we'll call a kind of clear or must outside release, go here with a quick out to the back and like an over to the tight end, it's just a unique combination. So it, you would imagine that it would be something like, you know, one, two, maybe peak this for certain looks, but then what would bring you back to the spot? Well, whatever it is, it works right here. They do a really nice job here. The flat defender widens with the flat. You got to just put it on him before the ball hawk. My guy's visor makes a play on it, and Mac Jones does right here, and it turns into a nice play. But just trying to make sense of their combinations. You don't see a lot of teams put what I would say spot is in most universal football language on the backside of like Y cross. And so... Yes, it works here, but just trying to understand how these concepts are kind of jigsaw piece together to understand what they're doing in their entire comprehensive offense, not just the drop back game. But right here, Mac Jones, decisive, got the ball out of his hand quickly. Good things happen. No penalty. Let's go. Next one here, third and five. We're going to miss what I'm going to call the short in down here to the bottom, the number one. And you know, this to me reveals a number of things. First of all, they're obviously not on the same page. Okay, third and five. To be able to basically take your drop, hit your back foot, throw the ball, and have the receiver nowhere near ready to go. So watch this route at the bottom when he throws this thing. I mean, one is still, I mean, he's almost like chilling like he's on the backside. And I think he probably is, question mark. This looks to me like what I would call post wheel. Okay, so th the first part of this is if that is the case and we catch middle field closed, this is usually where the ball will go. Just kind of like pitcher look, middle field closed. You know, maybe you don't like it if you've got inside leverage here. But I mean, that's a pretty good opportunity for us. We don't have to be in the quarterback room to know that that's a universal premium look. So that's a good option. Then it looks like it's tethered to whatever this is. And then this short in, okay, if a short in is the number one guy, like we're trying to throw him the ball, he's going to bust it and then go hard inside here. He's not going to come up here and do what I would say, like, la, 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 and then come across. You're going to do that if you're the backside. So if the, the reason this would time up where you come up and chill and then come across is if you're going to allow all these other plays to be the front side. So one, two three, and then four down here, yeah, that, that will time out. But watch Mac Jones's drop. He's taking a drop and throwing it down here to the number one, literally. One, two, three, throw. I mean, the ball's out. And you can say, well, you say a lot of guys throw with anticipation. That's what you want. Yeah, but you have to be on the same page. The receiver down here is chilling. 
I don't think he's chilling because he's slow. I think he thinks he's got time to work this thing. But again, peek that bang eight or glance up top. That's going to work. Look at the corner's technique. That's going to fucking score. You guys, this is the NFL. We're, we're not on the same page down here to the bottom, but we have a potential touchdown up top. So again, who knows how they're teaching this in their room, but whatever it is, it's disjointed at best. And we're leaving potential touchdowns out there when you look to the other side. So it's got to be frustrating for everybody involved. My goodness. Next one here, third and four. We get a completion this time to the number three up top. Shift up, a little wide receiver tight end up top. What I'm going to call an over-over. Now, it's a first down. It's a nice little chunk. At the end of the day, I also think it's not a great pass. You know, this certainly a better ball allows you to run after the catch, get some yak, gets an even bigger play potentially. I mean, that is, you know, Tebow-ish. That thing is dying on us. Sinker. It's And it's one of what I would say the better, more kind of what I would consider like cogent play calls. And what I mean by that is this to me makes sense. Like go out crosser. And that's kind of everything going that direction. You'd read this thing normally out, you know, maybe peak that go if you love it. One, two. And then where the ball ends up going on what I call that over, over just means it's like an over, but he goes over the other one. That's a great like man alert, middle field closed. You got all this space to run away. So it's a nice job seeing it. It's everything is nice except the throw. It just it just dies on us, right? It's just like down at the ankles, down at the feet. A better ball, a strike, a driven throw down the field. And I get it. They've got a game wrecker up there on the right tackle. But step up and drive it. Put it up on the guy's face. Let him run to it. Now he might get he might catch and get tackled. But he also might make somebody miss and turn into a big play as opposed to diving down to catch your sinker. So even when we are scheming up things that look a little bit better, we're still kind of like, oh, I mean, everything is hard. Get up in the pocket, reset, drive it. And I get it. His left guard is in his lap, but it's an NFL pocket. He doesn't get hit. That thing is just dying on us. Come on, dog. Drive that thing. Get it up on his face. Damn. Next one here. This is a really brutal interception. This is just a sky mail. We're eventually going to try to get to the number two down here as he works all the way across the field late. So no, Mac Jones, the creator, outside the pocket. Sky mail. My goodness. Just a brutal miss. There's nothing close. Bill can't believe it. Again, it looks like he's checking or audibly to the right. To whatever that is, and we'll talk about it. It looks like he's, you know, looking off to rip that thing. I mean, he, it's certainly there. I mean, it's such a bad throw. Our guy 85 can't even jump. I mean, it's behind him. He falls over himself. It's nowhere near the target. That is just a brutal. At least he comes in and tries to get a tackle from the bench here. Holy moly. My goodness. That is just a disgusting throw. And so it's just. It's just, you know, snowballing on this Patriots offense. It sure looks like he checks up top. And so when I say he checks up top, it looks like he gives a signal this way that in essence is like a seam or like a skinny skinny with like a little stop or hitch out here. If that's the case and you're looking off, so if he's coming off here to try to hold this middle field player this way and come back and drive this thing right here, well, if it's not there, just kick it out here. That's a, it's an easy one to two. We don't have to know the read to realize how things work as far as your eyes and moving players. We don't have to get out and try to create right here. There's no reason to go. So look off. You don't like the seam. Right there. Out to number one. as the number one. Boom. Right there. It's out. Or get it down to ch the check down. 15 standing over the ball. Duh, duh, get it out. We don't have to go tuck it to run come back, throw it back across our body, sky mail it, put it right on the DB's chest. Again, there's just, it's all bad. So there's the signal. We're going to look off to the left, rip it to the right. Nope. Now look, watch him put it, he tucks this thing. Like he tucks it in his right arm. It's, it's hard to go from that tuck to now we're going to go throw it. And again, 
I don't care if I say it's hard. It's not this hard. <laughs> Get the mailbox up. Oh my goodness. Just brutal, brutal interception. Wow. Next one here, third and seven. So third and seven, we're going to work the up top slot on this little like in and out. It never has a chance. Okay, now, now my issue here is not necessarily throwing beneath the sticks. I think you can get away with that sometimes in the league, especially if the guys that, you know, create space like Jitterbug, but like a tight end who I would consider like not the fastest tight end in the world, it's just not a great ask. So if we're asking him to essentially run what I'm used to calling like a slop route, almost like a slant to you can't type thing where we're going to come up here, up, in, and then back out. Well, that's a great route. That's a lot of moving parts for a big guy. The first down marker is the line. Even if you catch it, you're not going to be close to the first down marker. You combine the fact that, okay, that's the route we're going to go with. Well, now let me show you what the defense is. To me, this is an iteration of bracket. So these three for those two up top. And then really just this one down here, we're going to go these two for this one. So we've got this kind of like bracket. The one-on-one -on -one you want is down here. Now that might not be the one-on-one -on -one matchup you want. But to sort this thing out, you know, you're just asking this guy to essentially run this triple move into a bracket with he's got inside leverage, the guy's sitting on it. It's just not a great ask. The scheme to me, th this doesn't make sense. The only throw that would make sense here to me is the end down here to the bottom. But again, he's looking left. You know, maybe that post up top. But again, to me, if you're getting bracketed, you know, you don't know he's going to pop like that. Now, maybe if you know you're getting bracketed on just two on two on the two and the one outside is on his own, but I don't think he is. I think that safety just drives the throw. It's just we, trying to make sense of what they're asking Mac Jones to do. I'm not saying Mac Jones is playing well. I'm not because he's not. But I'm also saying that a lot of these schemes are not giving him a great opportunity to be successful because even if they complete these balls, it's not looking good. Now, this is what Mac Jones can do. Spread them out, be decisive, get the ball out of your hand up top. Boom, right on them. A little dart or one-step looky. You know, I think you could alleviate some of the issues potentially up front or on the perimeter speed-wise with just getting into some spread and letting Mac Jones use his eyes, use his vision. This is a really nice job of seeing that flat defender get with, so right here, seeing him go from here to buzz out to then be able to, whatever that route is, put it right on him, right away. Decisive, quick, you know, everybody, you know, it hasn't been that long. We all heard about the processing. Well, show me the processing. There it is. Great base. Look at the base. Catch, one step, go. That's it right there. Quick, decisive, first down. Or right in damn near it. It's just a beautiful job. I love the decisiveness. I love the spread element. Using his vision, his quickness to release the ball. Let's go. Next one here. This is a real bummer. Okay, so this is going to show, case to me, some of the limitations arm talent-wise for Mac Jones. It's not the fact that I never miss throws. I missed a bunch of throws. It's not the fact that other quarterbacks don't miss throws. They do miss throws. What you can't do is you can't throw this ball yards out of bounds. So he catches it, it looks like, but he's not even close to staying in bounds. And it's not like this is a weather game. We're missing this thing by yards to the wide side, just chucking it. I mean, that's not close to being in bounds. And I, I get it. You As you sit here and watch this, you'd be like, well, shoot, look at it. It's 50 yards. It's far to the wide side. I get all of that. That's fair. And an NFL quarterback should be able to throw a go route inbounds. Now, if you're just going to chuck it up and give the guy a chance, because, you know, that's that corner is running out of there when he goes to throw that thing. He's looking off and chucking 50 yards. Now, the other thing that if you're a fan of this channel, you should already know what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it anyways, because everybody, somebody's first video watching this. When you fake the downhill like this with whatever action it is for the quarterback if it's not just a five-step drop hitch and throw it is harder than it has to be to throw deep balls down the field so these just 
two-person go routes, these guys are not being affected, in my opinion, by the play fake. So they're just running, staying out over the top, running, staying out over the top. This play fake is for nothing. It's for no one. It makes the throw harder, farther down the field. It impacts this final outcome. So yeah, is it on Bill O'Brien that Mac Jones throws this ball out of bounds? No. But does he help him with the play design? No. What? Why? What? What is this doing? And again, it's my own rant. I probably am the only guy who's got this issue because I don't hear anybody else talk about it. People do this type of stuff all the time at all levels of football. Unnecessarily difficult equals never in history ball. Not great, Bob. Tough. Again, it just doesn't make intuitive sense to me. But you see it all the time. I can understand it if you're throwing comebacks and you want like number one or the DB on the right to stay out of the flat. That makes sense to me. But throwing deep balls late? Look at that ball. I mean, that ball is damn near out the white. It is going to land outside the white. Oh, man. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe. Hit the bell. Get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me, so thank you for subscribing. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, a great way to support the channel. Get even more Quarterback School content. Link is in the video description. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics. RPOs, tempos, pass protection, how to beat every coverage. We even have an entire offensive system available for you over there. So if you enjoy the way that I talk and teach ball, you will love the courses. Hop over there. Link is in the video description and enroll. We also have a bunch of free resources available. Check them out in the link in the video description as well. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, third and eight. One of the better timing throws of the day down here to the bottom. Number one, what I'm going to call a little stop route. Great timing. The ball location here is probably not where he wants. Now it ends up working out and it almost works out better because it kind of gets the wide receiver going away from where he's at as far as where the corner is going to drive this thing. But Mac Jones misses this ball inside. The timing of this route is nice. So right there, he lets it go. Look at the anticipation down here on the little baby shield. Now the ball location, normally you'd want to throw that to the outside number to the four. This ball goes inside and almost works as like a, a mini jerk. So for me here, this stop route is basically off the stem of a go route. And then when you hit the top of this thing, you're going to want to come right back down the stem. And usually that ball is thrown outside. Well, the ball here is thrown inside. And he's able to kind of drive this thing in and leave the corner kind of in the dust. So it works as like a mini jerk. But the ball location is not where you want. He throws it here. You want it over here. That's missing by yards, y'all. This is the NFL. I'm not going to. Not every throw is perfect. It won't be. But you don't see guys who start miss by yards very much. You just don't see it. And I'm not saying it's an easy throw. It's to the wide side. But that's a that's a pretty significant miss. Maybe not significant. It's a miss. Now, I think he could help himself with his feet. Is he lined up to the left? Right there? Look, his feet are right down the hash. He eventually gets there. Watch him get there eventually. Whoop, that is lined up. So does that impact some of the accuracy? Probably. It works, though. Good enough is good enough. Next one here. We're going to call this an RPO. Now, why there aren't more RPOs in this offense, I have no idea. We've been asking that for years. If I had to guess, I would honestly say that Bill doesn't want them because damn near every offense in the league or at any level has more RPOs than what the Patriots have shown the last few years. But right here, Mac Jones can show, you know he can operate it. I don't have to go back and look at Bama film. I can remember that they were really good at RPOs with him there. You can see how he sees the field. He sees the slot defender up top blitzing. They're running long trap to the left. When the slot defender blitzes, catch, throw. I mean, it's super, It's so easy. <laughs> it's so easy. Why don't they not do more of it? There has to be a reason. Okay, if Bill can talk forever about special teams, someone can ask him about RPOs because it just, it, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't mean that it's wrong that they don't do it. I just, 
It looks like Mac Jones is comfortable doing it. It looks like he sees it well. He can get it out of his hand. He can be accurate with these types of throws. I mean, that's way better than beating your head into a run that's not going to be there potentially because there's pressure right there. Just let him distribute the ball. Next one here, a little bit fortunate in my opinion. This is probably a turnover-worthy play down here to the slot at the bottom. Visor just kind of knows for the ball, man. This one goes right through his hands, though. They get lucky with the reception. But, man, what's he looking at? Like, it looks like he hezzies, and then he still throws it after the hesitation. 41 definitely could have intercepted that ball. And so, for me here, this shows a few things. You know, I first want to talk about what this route is. So, if this route is what most people in the league would run as like a choice or an option, where you can go out, you can come in, you can settle there, you can maybe go to the post, although I don't think they probably could right here. If that's what it is, that's one thing. They're just not on the same page. If this route is what he kind what he does as far as up, in, and then back out, that shit just takes too long. Like that that ain't that that's too long. This is very CFL y, in my opinion, as far as just like, you know, I expect this guy to be running down from the heavens, have all sorts of space out here, and you can like recess this thing. This guy, he's he's right there. I mean, it it, it goes through his hands. And if this defender pushes over to the slot, you know, with the backside over coming this way, that you're probably going to have a really good window here. So it's just about them not being on the same page, it being a little funky timing wise. We've got some hesitation from our quarterback and just forcing balls. So, I mean, what is that route from 14? I don't know. I, what is the decision from the quarterback? I don't know. Get lucky. Yes. Thank you. Need some luck right now. But you can see it from the back here. If he were to come to the backside and hit 88 coming across, it's right there, right? Like because 41 moves right there, come back and work right down the hash. A little double mailbox. Hands up as we run. Just run, 88. Man, how close is this to be an interception? Yo, say it with me now. If he could catch, he'd be playing fullback probably. <laughs> Next one here. Looks like coming out of the two minute, fourth quarter, down two, second and 11. Big, what I'm going to call big opportunity down here to the bottom, the number one. Now what this route is, I don't know. I don't love it. I do love the ball placement. That thing looks like it hits him in the damn hands. Now maybe... A DB gets his hands on it, maybe, but that ball is an absolute strike. Mac Jones can't do it by himself. I don't think anybody thinks that. So you gotta, we gotta help each other out. I mean, that ball is dropped in the bucket, right? Look at that throw. What? Oh my God. That's just sickening. That could really have given them a chance. Look at six. Can't believe it over there on the sideline. Get lucky. Oh my God. Right in front of Josh. Now, what is this route at the bottom? Is it supposed to be a double move? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. Certainly don't like the result. I love Mac Jones dropping it down, though, seeing the one-on-one, -on -one, putting it on him. It's not even really a one-on-one. -on -one. It's just a great opportunity for a big throw down the field that Mac Jones does everything, but he can't catch it for him. Finally get some protection. Finally showing off some deep ball accuracy. I mean... God, that hurts. Oh, my goodness. Last one here, third and 15. Again, post penalties, post drop. We're going to get a safety, of course, to kind of close out this disgusting L. And this really, you know, is a good kind of encapsulation of all the kind of issues that they're dealing with in New England. Watch 88 here on the right. We're supposed to be chipping. Instead, he gets thrown to the ground. This is supposed to help the right tackle. It looks like it hurts the right tackle. It just gets run around. And we take an L up front. We can't pass off the TT with the tackles. Center gets no depth. Center's too shallow. You can see the center getting held right there as well. Whoop. Pick. Rebound. Safety. Rough. Okay, furthermore, where do you want the ball to go? Okay, so what I'm going to say here is we'll call this like a deep hook. It's not there. Deep in. Maybe. But, I mean, because we can't get any sort of chip here, I mean, watch this chip. 
You know, I, I get it. This is not like a blocking tight end, but he's in there to chip. So you got to chip him and then get off into your check down. What you can't do is you can't miss the chip, fall on your ass, and do nothing. That equals safety. So is, is that on Mac Jones? You know, hell no, it's not. I mean, look at that. Come on, 88. Come on, dog. For who, for what? For a safety and an L? That's a tough way to loop, finish it out. My goodness. I just... <laughs> It, but it's not just 88, right? Like it's the interior not being able to pass off the stunt. But I mean, they can only allocate so many resources towards Crosby. You can't have three people over there, right? You got to be able to chip him. You got to be able to at least get your hands on him. Disaster. So that is a wrap. Mac Jones, the Patriots, tough. Tough to watch. Tough to break down. Tough to make sense of. No easy answers. That's kind of the initial kind of takeaway, for, in my opinion. Mac Jones specifically, you know, not getting really any help. Now, he's not playing well either. I think that's the other thing that's kind of a little bit surprising to me, just as far as some of his spray radius, as far as some of these misses. But when he gets opportunities, there are kind of in short bursts, when instances where you can see the decisiveness, you can see the vision, you can see him make good decisions quickly. It just feels like they don't put him in a lot of those situations. And when you combine that with a lot of penalties, with throwing a lot of quick outs, with a lot of like nothing burger plays or hard to make sense of concepts or concepts that are mirrored together or married together, it's going to be tough to move the ball when you maybe don't have any dynamic weapons on the perimeter. And they're not even helping you when you do throw the ball accurately down the field. All those things together make it really hard to play offense. And so it's it's frustrating, and I don't know what necessarily the answer is other than the fact that, yes, Mac Jones can and I think will play better, but how much better with that surrounding cast can he play with what they're asking him to do? And that's not even really touching on the idea that they don't do any RPOs and continue to not do any RPOs, which I would imagine would play to Mac Jones's strength. If you were asking me what are his strengths, where would we like to see the offense go, I'd like to see it get a little bit spready so he can distribute the ball quicker. Just catch it and get the ball out of his hands. I think it's one of his strengths. I would. They have to run some RPOs. They have to. And the marriage of how they run the ball with some of those RPOs, and then you can start to build in some of the play-action shots as opposed to just random play-actions where we're chucking the ball out of bounds or where we're spray-missing kind of him getting outside the pocket and creating. That's just not what he's going to do consistently. So you have to find ways to play to his strengths better than they have up until this point. That's what that's part of the deal, regardless of making excuses about who's on the outside with him. They've got to play to his strengths better. We'll see if they can find a way to do that. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.